Это было где-то часов где да не, пол девятого выехали. Где-то ну, часов девять, начало десятого утра. Ну, то есть мы проехали поле подсолнуха. И как-то так это все резко началось. Начался резкий обстрел. Изначально даже я подумала, что это щебенка отскакивает. Пока уже водитель говорит, выскакиваем, машины взрываются, пули летят, скажем так, обстрел шел конкретный. Я даже слышала, как плакал ребенок в газели. Я маме даже говорила, что плачет грудной ребенок. И оказалось, что там был ребенок или 9 или 10 месяцев. Ехала и беременная, и с детьми ехали тоже. Ну, порядка больше 10 детей точно ехала в газели. Хорошо. Все было обозначено. Видимо, они читать не умеют. Большими буквами в дети. Было написано на стекле. Со всех сторон. И тряпки белые висели. Я увидела, что папы больше нет. Мама кричала, Люда, Люда, ты где? Я говорю, я здесь. И мы потом уже, водитель говорит, ты папе ничем не поможешь. Пошли и, в посадку. И лезть в посадку через путя. И вот то мы лезли. И все. Хотелось папе помочь. И руку тянула, и все, но не получилось. Ощущение, что это не со мной происходит. Страха такого, как будто бы и не было. Но какое такое все на эмоции, Страх все пришел, когда... выскакивало так, что... Страх пришел, когда уже в посадке сидишь на коленях и слышишь, что ездит тяжелая техника. Не знаю, что. И ты понимаешь, что это ездит, ну, типа ищут, чтобы подстрелять. Чтобы добить всех. Было восемь, но одного парня мы не давили. Он, мы его оставили, потому что он истек кровью, и уже он засыпал, ноги не шли, а дотянуть у нас не было возможности его уже. Мы пришли на скорую, попросили доехать машиной, чтобы его оттуда забрать. Но что нам медсестра сказала, что туда никто не поедет и никто не пойдет. Там сильный обстрел. Ну, мы сказали, вы хотя бы сообщите, чтобы знать, она ну, мы знаем, кому сообщить. Украина зашла 27 числа, а выезжали мы 25 -го. Вот. И все это происходило с левой стороны, то есть где стояла Россия. My name is Don Arleth. I'm a correspondent for TVP World, which is Poland's first 24-hour news network uh, in English. Now, uh, I've been here in Ukraine for about three months of the war so far. Now, we got to go into the city of Kupiansk. Uh, now, it's quite dangerous to go there. Uh, there's a lot of shelling, both from the Ukrainian side and from the Russian side. First of all, there's a lot of outgoing artillery fire from Ukrainian forces. And as you go around, it may be a bit alarming if you're not used to hearing explosions all around you. Um, but knowing now the difference between outgoing and incoming fire, I would say that the, the outgoing fire is not an issue. It's the incoming fire that you need to watch out for. 
we watched three characters, Dennis and his girlfriend, Sasha, as well as uh, Serhei, and they are volunteers who made a, their own organization called Station Kharkiv. Now, these people have been risking their lives every day to, uh, Dennis is from, uh, is from that city, so he has family, lots of friends, and, and, and people that he's known and grown up with. So he basically takes lists of everybody who needs things, um, whether it be food, medicine, water. They also bring in petrol for the trauma, for the trauma ward there that deals with direct injuries from the shelling that is now going on. Um, there's no electricity there, so they need that fuel so that they're able to run their generators and, and, and save lives. We went to several locations all around the city. Uh, the keys were to be very fast, as fast as you can, driving from one location to the other. Um, they dropped off many pre-prepared packets of exactly what the people that ordered. So I, I'd say the most incredible thing that we saw was this team essentially risking their lives to go in and to deliver these things, and they do this every single day. While we were there, we drove down a street that uh, the house had, a house had taken a direct hit from uh, shelling most likely early in the morning because there were still things burning, smoldering and on fire. Um, and there was debris blocking the street. So we, Dennis got out of the car, we were in two cars, Dennis got out of the car and ran to the location to deliver medicine. Uh, meanwhile, we cleared the street of debris. And before you know it, the shelling started on that exact position once again. So we, basically just jumped to the ground and tried to cover ourselves in case any shrapnel uh, was going to go out. It's the most important thing to get as low as you possibly can. And once we thought it was clear, then we scrambled to find shelter. Thankfully, there was in a neighboring house, there was, uh, there was a underground basement. Once again, once we thought the coast was clear, there was a soldier that, that came down there with us that was on patrol in the area and he knew about the shelter, so uh, he kind of told us when the coast was clear and we pretty much just ran as fast as we could to the cars and got out of there as fast as possible. After we got out, as we were leaving, we were able to see uh, a platoon of, of, of soldiers come down, uh, responding, I believe, to that shelling. Probably the shelling was much further out, but they were headed in that direction as well as, as, well as tanks. and. And, and many other soldiers on those tanks. But the mission wasn't done yet. There were still several stops to make. Uh, there was a family to evacuate. There was an elderly lady to bring further outside the city that lived in the center to bring further away from the shelling. Um, and so all in all, it was pretty amazing day to see, uh, in, in, in my perspective, to see these, these young people. For me, it was an amazing day for them and they said, uh, day like every day. Um, and there's just, you see that all over this country. It's just absolutely amazing thing to see.